that, who's had a great time here today? Some really good talks. Did you meet some cool people? Who's here for their first time? Okay, who's here from outside Florida? Oh, come on in. We're just doing a survey. Who's here from outside Florida? Cool. Cool. So, my, um, so some of you heard me say this because I've talked to you before. My most exciting thing from this weekend is um, last year, last year at the first uh, Code on the Beach, I had the opportunity, I did three talks. And one was um, early stage funding in your startup. The second was just because you can doesn't mean you should. Because a lot of times as developers, people, um, they don't see it, so they create it. And just because it's not right in front of you doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And then my third talk that I started doing was sales. Someone has to get checks. Um, because, because cash flow is really important. And uh, so I had a gentleman yesterday who came up to me and um, he was in all my talks last year and he said, you know, I've learned some cool things and I went and implemented some of those and I just closed on my first round of funding last week. So um, that's what I hope. I hope that you guys have a great experience here, that you come back next year. The team that puts this together um, is incredibly dedicated. Uh, to providing great content and, and making this a great experience. And, and what I really love, and um, the reason we come back to Jacksonville again and again, is that Jacksonville really has for us been a place of um, where you can bring your family. It's very family oriented. And we go to developer conferences around the state and, and, and other places. And um, to go to a speaker party and have people come with their spouse or to a place where you could bring your kids. Not all conferences are like that. I don't know, maybe you guys have never been to some of the other ones. Um, but not all conferences are like that. And so actually we were inspired by some of our friends from Jacksonville um, about four years ago as we were developing our stuff in Sarasota, Bradenton area, to really focus on making a conference, making an event that would be, um, that would be family friendly. So we are at 514. If it were a TED talk, I wouldn't be able to start for, I don't know, 15 seconds or something. Um, but we're close enough. So are, are you ready? Okay, great. Um, my name is Sarah Hand. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Wall where dreams are made or broken. So how many people in here are an entrepreneur? Like you have a venture that you're working on or you're thinking of starting a venture. Okay, well, in today's world, in today's world, entrepreneur is the hot word. Um, but like an endurance sport, like running or cycling, there's a, there's a place, there's a place where being an entrepreneur is hard. And, and this guy over here, this statue is called the Tired Man. And just like those other talks that I've been doing about early stage funding in your startup, um, the world has changed a lot in the last couple of years. And, and entrepreneur has become the hot word. We've come through an, an economic upheaval. And entrepreneurs take assets and they turn them into wealth. So there's a reason everybody wants you to be an entrepreneur. There's a reason why people in your company want you to be entrepreneurial. Because they want to have wealth generation. However, we're not telling all of the story. And so it, for the last 15 years, I've worked with people um, in this kind of whole life work. You know, because if your life is screwed up, your business is not going to work right. And if your business is not going where it needs to go, your life is not going to work right. Um, so I've been working in this area for a long time and decided the next best, best thing that I could bring to the technology community that I love is if I could help you prepare. Again, if you can ask better questions, you're going to get better answers. And the quality of people that come to this type of conference the skills that you have, you can do anything. So if we can help you to uh, create technology that's validated by needs in the market, and we can prepare those of you who are going to launch companies to know what's ahead, just like, just like runners, what is, what is so cool, and we're gonna talk about today, is athletes in the world and what's happened because of what they understand. 
So um, did you know that less, one, less than 1% 1 of the population will ever complete a marathon? Less than 1% of the population will ever complete a marathon. In the last 100 years, we've learned to run a mile in less than five minutes. There was a time when that was thought to be impossible. I'm going to introduce you to one of our friends in this slide who's an ultra athlete. He, he actually has a friend that he, he runs marathons with who almost runs consistently five minute miles for the entire marathon. That's mind boggling what people can do. And then according to Bloomberg, which is really interesting, so we have this, this nice kind of stock exchange type thing here, um, only two out of every 10 businesses are going to succeed. But entrepreneur is a hot word. And then even at Y Combinator, right? It's y, Combinator, y Combinator, one of the hottest incubator, accelerator type projects. Everybody has heard, or most everybody in the, the technology world, oh, somebody went to Y Combinator. They went to Techstars. So in the last five years, Y Combinator has accepted 500 businesses into their program out of about 10,000 applications. So we would think maybe that a company that is actually accepted into Y Combinator, into their accelerator program, might have a better chance of survival than the eight out of 10 that are gonna die, right? 97% of the companies that go to Y Combinator are gonna fail. So in this room, in the technology community, it's kind of like uh, if we aren't validating what we're building, you know, I tell people, if you're just building cool technology for cool technology's sake, that's cool. But don't tell your wife you're building a business. <laughs> so let's talk about building a business and what does that mean? So I think, as I was putting this together, I think that this is why entrepreneur is hot. It's not just about the money. It's not just about the money. I think we're entering into a new era. Has anybody heard the term, go west, young man? So, um, go west, young man is a quote from the American author Horace Greeley. Now this, I think, is really, really cool. It says, Greeley favored westward expansion. He saw the fertile farmland of the west as an ideal place for people willing to work hard for the opportunity to, to succeed. The phrase came to symbolize the idea that agriculture, I love this, agriculture could solve many of the nation's problems of poverty and unemployment, characteristic of the big cities of the East. So imagine, let's translate that. He saw that technology he saw that technology and this new place that we're going to the future and, and these devices like this would be an ideal place for people who are willing to work hard for the opportunity to succeed. Do you see how that might be similar? Why is entrepreneur the hot word? I think in our country and around the world, but especially for our country and why this ties into the entrepreneurial world, this is part of our heritage. Entrepreneur is the new frontier. I think what's interesting is, is um, uh, Dr. John Gartner talks about um, that our country was seeded by pioneers. We were seeded by immigrants that came here. People, did, I mean, does anybody have a family that's not American Indian? Any kind of family heritage? Everybody came from pretty much someplace else. My grandmother came over on a boat from Poland. You know, our family history goes way back. You have people that saved money and sacrificed to come here. And then when we talk about the pioneers, they risked incredible things to be here. And so what they're proposing, researchers are proposing, is that genetically, genetically, there may be something different in our American population overall. What is it like if you seed a continent with this entrepreneurial or pioneer mindset? Now the challenge is, is that this world is different now. It's not an agriculture society. It really is about technology and what technology can do because technology affects all of us. But we're not telling the whole story. Um, I love this quote from Mark Suster. 
Uh, he was a, uh, an, a two-time uh, entrepreneur who became a venture capital. And he says, being an entrepreneur is, uh, is actually very unsexy. This is the conversation he has with people. He goes, it's long hours. It's time away from family. It's low salary, high risk, high stress. It only looks sexy when you read it on TechCrunch. He said, there's no shame in being an executive at a company or whatever. He goes, I'm not trying to be negative, but I start most conversations with entrepreneurs by saying, make sure it's your personality type. So although we have a country that has this as a basis, not everybody gets to be the leader. Now we all have a certain responsibility or sphere of influence that we are a leader of. But not everybody is going to be the head of a company. And so what I want you to consider here, just like I, when I'm talking to people about what they're going to build, is research and feasibility. I have a friend who was here last year, and I said, to, um, I said, I tell the story about you. I don't use your name, so it's OK. And he goes, no, you can use my name. Because as an entrepreneur, he uh, lives in Orlando, had a company. He and his wife had two children. And, um, he decided to leave his entrepreneurial gig and go and work with a big company. And uh, they would allow him to work remotely, so he would stay in Orlando. Their company is headquartered in the Tampa Bay area. Um, he is one of the um, coordinators of Orlando Code Camp. And so he was going to leave his company, work for this big company, and they'd still let him do his community stuff. And people are like, he bailed. He gave up. And I said, no, not at all. I really respect him. His wife got pregnant for their with their third child. And he decided that family is really important to him. And it just wasn't the season. So as we go through this, there's some of you that are entrepreneurs and you're building a company. And we're going to ask some questions. And hopefully, like we're getting athletes that can do incredible things, hopefully you'll be better prepared to deal with that wall. Because it will come. If you persevere, being an entrepreneur is an endurance race. If you're in it, if you think it's a quick fix, you're going to make some money and be out. Um, you should go try something else. So if you're going to be an entrepreneur, we want to give you better tools to be able to make it through that wall and do incredible things. And if you don't have that ability to tolerate risk or be that risk bearer, uncertainty bearer, it's kind of fun as you go and, and, you, and you search and you see that they're, they're utilizing that term as a, a risk bearer. If you don't have the ability to do that, um, A, personality wise, or B, because of where you are in your life, that's OK. There are seasons where you're going to be able to do that and seasons where you're not. Or maybe you can um, work with a company that is younger and still be a part of that upward ride, but not have to bear all the risk. So I believe, again, if I can get you to ask better questions, you'll have better answers. So it's hard. So part of the research they're talking about is uh, hypomania. This, this, are we genetically a little different? You know, it's the nature versus nurture. And so some people have suggested that entrepreneurs may have, um, may have a tendency towards what they call soft bipolar or hypomania, which can give entrepreneurs advantages. It includes elevated moods, expansive creativity, an increased ability to tolerate risk, um, can be visionary, highly self-confident, persuasive, energized, boundlessly enthusiastic about the companies they're building. Think of hypomania as a kind of success gene, uh, Dr. Freeman says. And then they put this part in there. It's not just about preventing people from killing themselves. <laughs> When people understand how they're wired, they can optimize their performance and they can increase the odds of their success. So I said, for 15 years, I've been working in this space. I have a workbook called Setting Goals and Making It Happen. I believe the better that you know yourself, the better you can mitigate those risks. So um, here we have the Entrepreneur's Emotional Roller Coaster. This is from a group in Canada. Um, one of the things I've been working with clients with for about 10 years now is, uh, is a, um, 
a scale that shows where people are neurochemically. So when I found this, the entrepreneur's um, emotional roller coaster, it talks about when emotion goes up, intelligence goes down. Um, when I teach on sales, we, I talked about it yesterday, mad, sad, glad, or scared. When you are emotionally engaged, you are not quite in your right mind. When we read some of the stuff online that people do, you know those people aren't in their right mind. So the challenge is, is that you have all these ups and downs. So how do you work to stay in your right mind with all the pressures that you're gonna deal with, okay? Because this is gonna happen. I think the interesting part is somebody's been asking us about, you know, how's your, how's your startup going, right? My partner and I have a consulting business and we have a startup in the civic social entrepreneur space. Um, you know, I wish I was doing a startup in something where I could make a lot of money and get out quick. <laughs> um, the civic space, working with universities and, and cities and county governments, talk about a slow sales cycle. Um, but it's very rewarding. And, and the, the interesting part is, is you have a high one day. Something happens and it's incredibly exciting. And the next day you go, oh my God, did they really do that? Did you ever have that feeling? One day and something incredible happens and the next day it feels like somebody kicked you in the stomach. How do you deal with that? Now the challenge is, until just the last couple of years, I mean, and all you have to do is look at founder's depression. Um, in, only in the last couple of years have we started to talk about this. About people on this roller coaster who have to appear perfect because as a founder, as a leader of your company, you know, somebody said, we have to make it look like it's going really well, not too well, and on the bad days, you know, we have to mitigate that. We have to mitigate the highs and the lows, and we're the person who's in charge, who's, who's selling the vision, not only to our clients, but we're selling the vision to our team, to our investors. We're keeping everybody on board and engaged and, and dealing with all of these things. And that's an incredible amount of pressure. Now somebody said, said, well, it just sounds like people that are entrepreneurs are being whiny. They want to have sympathy. Don't you realize that nobody talks about us non-entrepreneurs? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it, it's this piece of becoming aware. Uh, because now the challenge is, now that everybody has to be an entrepreneur, now they're doing entrepreneurship training in elementary schools and middle schools and high schools and colleges and the expectation is everybody should be like this. Not everybody's, we're all different. We're all different and it's really bad to tell people that we should all be this way and not let them know the full story of what is really involved. So, but there is a new breed of athlete. So, just like we couldn't, uh, we couldn't run five-minute miles, and marathons were hard because about 20 at about 20 miles you went from aerobic to anaerobic um, uh, processing, and so then you started you hit this place where you were overwhelmed with fatigue, and your vision got blurry, and you just didn't know if you could go on. But now, what we know about the human body and what we're able to do, and how we're able to hydrate and manage nutrition, and how people are able to train. It's incredible what people are doing. And so this gentleman here is my friend John Pyle. Um, John is an ultra athlete. Um, here he's uh, coming, um, he's coming in, this is in, in Sarasota, we, we live in Sarasota, and he's at the stadium, and uh, he's carrying his flag. John ran across the United States every day for 83 days, carrying a flag above his head, raising money for the Wounded Warrior Project. We're standing there talking one night and he goes, oh my gosh, I forgot, I, had a I have a half marathon tomorrow. You know how long people train? They're like, I have a half marathon, I have a 5K, I'm getting ready. You know, people, people don't forget they have races, that's normal people. John's like, oh, I have a half marathon tomorrow. He did this piece not too long ago called Drop and Give Me 50. Jump out of an airplane and run 50 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and the 
faster you get to the ground, the quicker you got to learn. Right. So, so this is unheard of. Now, you know what's really crazy is this guy over here, um, Carl Meltzer. Look him up. This guy runs multiple hundred mile races. And he's like, 100 miles, that's not that long. How, I mean, 100 years ago, did we think that we would be able to run 100 miles? That people would be able to run marathons with five minute miles? No way. So there's two sides of this coin. One is everybody should be an entrepreneur. And it's really hard. And you're gonna hit a place where you look like the tired man. And if you think you're not, then, you're missing something. You're like the people that get married that think that they will never have a fight because their love is different. It's not realistic. However, the truth is, with knowledge and training and understanding, athletes are able to do incredible things. And I believe that if we begin to talk about it, not in as, woe is me, I want everybody as a martyr to look at me as an entrepreneur, or that I'm an entrepreneur and I'm more special than all you non-entrepreneurs because that's not true either. If we talk about it and we become more educated then we can do stuff like 100 mile races. We can mitigate some of the damages and then um, some of the people that we've lost because they didn't feel like there was a place for them to go. Because now as an entrepreneur the pressure is really on. So is it for you? This is what you have to determine. Anybody ever see Rocky? I was, there were so many pictures. I wanted, I was like, how am I going to share with them some way in, to capture this piece of the, the, the guy who's training wherever and just, he's just going forward. Um, there's incredible, incredible pictures on this. Uh, so we picked this one because it's colorful. And, and you know, and, and Rocky didn't think he could do it. And his friend, Apollo Creed, was there to support him and encourage him. Important message. Um, is it for you? Is it for you? Running a marathon requires commitment, discipline, and endurance. And there's a place where it's going to hurt. And people that run, people that cycle, people that dance, people that are athletes, they understand that. As entrepreneurs, there's a place. I, w I was... Uh, as I was preparing for this talk, we had a, a gentleman who says, we're launching an incubator accelerator in our Braden, Sarasota Bradenton area. And this gentleman said, if you haven't had to put payroll on a credit card one time to juggle while everything's happening, he goes, I don't know if you're an entrepreneur. Um, there is a place where it may hurt. If it's not for you, it's okay. But how do you balance that? How do you balance that with your family? So um, the first thing is priorities. Priorities. What's really important? And I'm going to talk about this neurochemical scale. This like, uh, if, if, has anybody ever driven through the mountains in Chattanooga? And they have these things called runaway truck ramp. <laughs> So the tool that I use is kind of like those flashing lights that they remind you that, oh my gosh, I'm about to go to Vegas and lose my house on a crap game. And people in their right mind don't do that, do they? No. So if we can see those warning lights before we go radically out of control, we can mitigate that danger in our lives as entrepreneurs. We can say, is it really feasible? Does it really make sense? And the first place, out of balance. Now, a place of balance where life works means you're identifying fears and feelings. You're dealing with problems. You're not hiding the problems in a bag, putting the bills there, not looking at them, um, ignoring those things. So you're dealing with those things. The first step out of that place where you actually have some sort of management in your life um, on the scale, this fast scale, is forgetting priorities. I was working with a client one time, and they said, um, I can't identify this thing. None of these characteristics look like me. And I realized that this client had never identified priorities in their life. 
it, it was kind of a, a foreign thing, but they had never really thought about what is important to me. Okay, because you're going to have a day. Now, now, things that are important to you, it doesn't mean that when we talk about balance or making life work, um, I was working with a, a doing a workshop and this guy said I said your life how you spend your time should reflect what's really important to you and he goes well my family's most important to me so you're telling me that if I don't spend eight hours a day with my family and I spend eight hours a day at work that I'm out of balance I'm like no what it means is that life is goes through a flow and days are different and if you're a CPA April 14th is not going to be balanced but you know that going into the deal, right? April 16th, 17th, 18th, take a couple days off and go do something with your family. Do something that's important. There are gonna be days that you pull all-nighters. But if you do that <coughs> night after night after night, week after week after week, you're not balanced. So you exercise. Does it mean that you exercise every single day? No. But if physical fitness is important to you, you fit it in there somewhere. You may have two weeks where you, ha you haven't worked out in two weeks because life has been crazy. And you go, and you block off some time. Because life happens. Companies happen. Being an entrepreneur is an up and down thing. But what I have to do is I have to look at my schedule. And, and um, somebody asked me about it yesterday. How do you deal with this? I block time. And I understand what's important. And I try to make things hit more than one priority. So when people ask us about our company, Spark Growth, they say, what's important to you? What do you guys work on? We work in four areas. We work with entrepreneur ecosystem development, women's uh, initiatives, um, mostly in technology, education, and funding. And pretty much any project we work on involves at least two of those. So I always call that a win-win-win. You know, if I can do something that involves multiple things that are important to me and my kids, that's a win for me. You know, um, so I look at priorities, what's really important to me. And I believe in this thing called um, life values. And so a life value is something that goes through my entire life. If I know what's important to me with the concept of my entire life, goals are easy. Goals are always, what's the number one thing I can do to move myself forward? That's an immediate goal. Six month goal is, um, okay, so I need to do this next. Where do I want to be six months from now? So if my kids are important, I look at my daughter and I say, based on my relationship with my daughter and what's going on in her life, what's the most important thing I can do to help empower her to be the best that she could be based on where she's at right now? It's easy. Goals are easy. You don't have to go, oh my gosh, it's New Year's. What am I going to do this next year? You look at what's really important. In our business, on a day-to-day -day basis, we have goals and things that we're working on, but on a day-to-day -day basis, we evaluate. And we say, um, this is important, but yes, based on the market feedback from yesterday or based on this project opportunity, now we're going to move it down the scale a little bit. You know, and my partner will jokingly say that I say, and where's the money? <laughs> How is it tied to revenue? This is important over here. It's an infrastructure detail and it'll be nice, but it's not as important as this proposal that needs to come in or this invoice that needs to go out. And so when I understand what my priorities are, I use this as a guideline here. And then this is uh, by Stephen Covey. It's one of, uh, one of the bright spots in seven habits of highly successful people. Um, and there's four quadrants here. I always forget this one because I, I tend not to live there. But the first one is urgent and important. This is where you're stressed, you're burned out. This is, a, this is for the drama queens and kings. Do you know anybody who lives in crisis? Oh my gosh. And they don't have to. I mean, there's stuff that happens. So my goal is always to live over here and not urgent and important because there's always going to be crisis stuff. So like when we're doing an event, everything that I could handle ahead of time, if I can talk to the caterer, get all the details done, then a couple of days before the event, I call people with the final numbers. But everything, print media, all the things that you have any kind of control over, you take care of them on a timely basis. And so when the fires come, because you do, 
you're going to have crisis. There's going to be something. And so I plan space, white space in my life to make that fit. My biggest challenge that I have with the clients that I work with is getting them to block time out so that they can take care of these things so that when the fires come, they can deal with it. So uh, not urgent and important. So we're going to give you an example of how this works. Um, so when I talk about this, uh, you have uh, your phone bill. Your cellular phone bill comes in, and it's not due for a couple of weeks, and so you're not really thinking about it. It's not, I mean, it's important, but it's not urgent. Well, stuff happens, you get busy. Normally, you maybe you're paying your bills on a schedule, but you kind of let your schedule slip, and you didn't mark it down on your calendar, and it's Friday afternoon, and you did get your paycheck, but you didn't stop by the bank and drop it off, and so you really haven't been tracking, you're not sure what's in your account. It's not that you don't have money, maybe you just haven't moved it over, and it's Friday afternoon, and you get one of those automated calls that says that we're going to disconnect your service. Oh, now what was important is all of a sudden urgent, because you're like, I'm not going to have a phone for the weekend. Now you have to figure out, and you're like, oh my gosh, and maybe you're in some place, and they got cruddy service, and you can't get to your whatever, and you can't go on and lo log on because you don't have the, the internet that you need to be able to do that, and you're not sure because you didn't put your check in because it's sitting on the counter, and it's not an automatic deposit because maybe you were working uh, as an entrepreneur, you're working with a client who gave you this, and it didn't go in. Has anybody ever had anything like that happen? And now you're looking, oh, and, and I used the business card when I was out the other day, or I used my personal card, and now I'm not sure. I, I don't know how much money is in which bank, and I don't have this with me. And all of a sudden, what was important now becomes urgent. And you're over here. So what happens when you live in urgent like this for a long time is there's all this cortisol going through your head. You're not in your right mind and your body can only handle so much. So you know what happens? You default, which is right here, to not urgent and not important. And what this looks like is sit on the couch and eat chips. Not urgent, not important. So in this, know you have a default as an entrepreneur when you get stressed. Recognize where you're at. How much stress am I dealing with? And then create a plan. <coughs> So um, it was funny, we were sitting during break, and I have a list of things that are on my desktop, because my, my desktop is where I have my working projects, I finish them and I file them. So when my desktop is clean, then you know that I don't have anything that I'm working on. And then sometimes if I, people have to see my desktop, I create a, a folder that's a temporary folder so I can push all my stuff in there so you don't have to see it. Um, but we're sitting there and it's lunch, and I already played the, uh, cornhole and um, so I'm inside and we have a while before some things go so I was doing editing some documents and sending a flyer out and and it was just like really easy stuff because it was on my desktop and I cleaned some things off um, I have a plan when I have those those little moments um, when I have a plan when it's not urgent and not important when I can't deal with anything have you ever had that time where you can't deal with anything else? Slam Right. I can't be creative and brilliant anymore. So I can't be creative and brilliant anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on something that will move something forward. So maybe it's Sunday afternoon. I have a bunch of projects that need to happen. Um, I still I need to clean my house. I have two teenagers. I have all this going on. So a good Sunday afternoon for me is I do something like I, I iron or mending, something like that. We're going to watch Transformers again. Um, or oh yeah, when they have a I love FX because you know. So we're going to watch we're going to watch all three of the Matrix movies right in a row. I'm going to iron. My kids are going to be there, and I'm going to feed them healthy food, not chips. Um, and so I don't have to be creative or brilliant. I'm going to have to do those other things sometime. And I combine it in a way that we're still kind of doing something together. Have a plan so that when you're in those days where, or you hit those times where you just can't do something, or I have a garden, I'll go out and I'll work in my garden. Um, some days I'm in just barely maintenance mode and other days I'm in like I'm out there and I'm really working. But I wor look for those things. As an entrepreneur, 
You need to look for those things that help you move your projects forward and help you deal with adrenaline, help you deal with being able to lower where you're at and have peace. Uh, I have a question. Yes. How does somebody get into an urgent, not important state? Uh, urgent and urgent and not important. Um, here, short-term focus. Okay. Um, badly managing your life. Um, crisis management. So. You see goals and plans as worthless. I'm, I'm trying to, um, I have a friend who lives that way, who is, yes? When there's so much going on, you're completely overwhelmed, and you can't focus on anything, so you put everything to the side, you play a video game, or have a TV show, or something, so that you don't have to think about it. And then you let your subconscious work on it as best as it can to come up with a point. Oh yeah, that was college. <laughs> so, but I would say that is that is the not urgent and not important, and that is and that is you know and so you want to allow your brain. We're going to go to the next slide, the next two slides, and I'm going to show you something that will um, a couple of things that'll help because I have a um, this faster. I actually have this. If you want this, I have this tool that's available. I'll email it to you. It's too much information to put here. Um, is this cool? It's a brain <coughs> Rubik's. I know, that's cool, isn't it? So the faster scale, the letters stand for um, F, is for getting priorities, A is for anxious, S for speeding up, T for ticked off, E for exhausted, and R for radically out of control. So this is how this looks. I have no idea why I volunteered to do that. Whether it was a project, what, whatever, I took on this additional responsibility. I didn't think it was going to be as big a project as I thought. Has anybody ever done that? Oh yeah, right. And so, so the first is I forgot my priorities. I forgot what was really important and I took something on because, I don't know, maybe I wanted to make somebody happy, I wasn't really thinking about what was already on my plate, I wasn't thinking about other things, so I volunteered. And then, all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, this is bigger than what I thought, and I began to get a little anxious. <gasps> How am I really going to get this done? I made a commitment, I like to follow through with the things that are important, and I told people that I was going to do this, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it. And so if I could just go faster, if I get up earlier, and I go to bed later, and I skip lunch, and I drink more coffee, and I could just go a little faster, I could really get it done. And then, I get ticked off. Doesn't my family see what I'm doing? Can't my boss or my partner understand how hard I'm working to do this? And then I become exhausted. I can't sleep or, or I can't get up. And, and you're emotionally right on the edge and then radically out of control. Now, for some people, that's lay on the couch and eat chips. Some people, that's gambling. Some people, that's um, going to the mall and spending a bunch of money. A place where you go, oh my God, I never thought I was going to do that. Some people, it's drugs or going on a drinking binge. That's what it looks like. In each of those stages, neurochemically, there's something that you do um, to help you deal with the challenges that's giving you some sort of see, neurochemical reward. But you get to the end of this radically out of control, and that's because... Um, your brain is exhausted. Your brain is exhausted. So each one of those steps, there's some little triggers, and for each one of us, it's different. You might find yourself just being a little more snarky or edgy, and you go, wow, I'm not normally like that. Because nobody goes to the point of radically out of control. Now I believe, so for example, I believe that um, I believe that when Tiger Woods fell off the end of the earth, I believe that he was not in his right mind. I don't believe that people do that when they're in their right mind. Not the person who characteristically, as a, as a young person and all the way up, 
diligently practice his reputation um, to become who he was and what he needed to do to become what he was required an exceptional amount of diligence, um, perseverance, character. So if you take somebody who works all their life like this and you look and you see what they do and they jeopardize their sponsorship, their entire career and their family, that person's not the person that was over here, is it? So what happens going down this scale? How do we stay balanced as entrepreneurs? How do we stay on track? How do we deal with this? How do we deal with the depression, the anxiety, and the things that go with this up and down roller coaster of creating wealth out of nothing? Well, some of the easy ones, breathe. So when I was talking to this gentleman the other day, I said, you know, I, I remember, um, I was on my way to a class in Tampa, this is probably about eight years ago, driving over the Howard Franklin Bridge and the sun was coming up, it was an early class um, with uh, my coach and a group of people that I was working with and it is the most beautiful view, I just love it. And I'm driving over and I have a little bit of a headache and all of a sudden I realized that I wasn't breathing. And I thought, well this is really kind of crazy because your body's just supposed to do this, right? Has anybody ever had to remind themselves to breathe? Yeah. Now, what happens is we're stressed, is we do. Anxiety, you feel that. You start doing this thing called breath holding. Now what's really cool, deep, big deep breaths, three of them. Breathe all the way in, breathe all the way out, three times. Your parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and it begins to change what's happening neurochemically in your brain. As an entrepreneur, as anybody in life dealing with stress, stop. If you can do that, if you put a sign on your wall that says, remember to breathe, three deep breaths and exhales can change what's happening in your brain. Understand the gap. Um, there's a, a, a really good coach who does some work on this. So have you ever looked at a long blacktop road and seen kind of like this shiny space that looks like water ahead of you? Do you ever get to the water? No, because it's not really there. But you keep feeling, oh, like it's just a little bit further. It's a little bit further. For a lot of us, especially entrepreneurs because you could work every day, you could work 24 seven on your business and it's not gonna be done. Do you ever feel like that? You could just go faster and faster and there's still so much to do. Um, so it's very easy for us. I was working with a client the other day and, and my client is telling me all the challenges that they have in their business and how they're just not where they want to be. Now, this client's business is 25% more profitable this year than last year. And last year, she was 20% over what she was the year before because of the work we've been doing. That's really good, isn't it? But what happens is we measure towards that wet spot on the road. We measure towards the horizon. Um, they've done research on people that have uh, accomplished incredible things. And do you think the happiest people are the people that have accomplished the most? No, you can have people that have accomplished very similar things. You know the people that are happier are the people that don't measure how far they still have to go to be successful. They're the people who go, look how far I've come. And sometimes we just need to remind ourselves. I needed to remind my client that said, hey, what do we talk about? Did we do this and this? And, and she was like, we did. <sighs> we need to understand the gap between getting there and where we've come from. Endorphins do the body good. This is your brain on drugs. Um, Drugs that people, that people take, whatever type they are, um, create things in your body that your body actually does on its own really well. Like anger is, more, is 10 times more powerful than heroin. People that are angry can take their fist, slam it into a concrete wall. Does anybody know anybody who's done somebody like that, something like that? 
probably not us, but I mean, I know people who have done stuff like that, and they feel no pain. Yeah, at that moment. You know how much morphine you have to take not to be able to feel pain to do that? A lot. Your brain is so powerful. When we're in, in the entrepreneurial arena, it is very important for us to be able to manage what happens. So, um, for some people, exercise releases, for everybody, exercise releases endorphins. For some people, they have um, an endorphin rush in as little as 10 minutes. Some people, as long as 30 minutes before that happens. So I'll tell you, for us, what I think is, what, what is really exciting is I have, I work to have quiet time every morning and I have a notepad there. And so I have the, this time and I have something I'm reading or studying or whatever, and I have a notepad and I write things down. And then at the end of the day, I like to do a bike ride by myself. Well, my partner, it's like, it's like he should be scared because <laughs> the quiet times and the bike rides, I come back with this whole list of ways to solve problems. Because what happens is we're speeded up and we're going as fast as we can to get it done. But sometimes going faster and going longer, have you ever worked a really long day and found out you, you really weren't as productive? That's critical. If you're going to be that ultra athlete in the business world, if you're gonna be somebody who turns nothing into incredible wealth. The biggest challenge that you face, that you're going to face, is not whether you have a validated need in the marketplace. It's whether you can think clearly, you can make good choices, and you can survive that. And can you do that with people that are important? So this is um, myself, my, my stepdaughter, and uh, two of my grandchildren, and my two daughters. Um, we did our event, uh, a big event in the spring, and this one here <coughs> came and brought me a bouquet of flowers. They'll want to know what happens after the talk. Um, my kids have made incredible sacrifices for me to have jumped off a cliff as an entrepreneur. Um, they know that it's hard. As, as an entrepreneur, I don't know, I think that, that um, at least once you go on monster.com in the middle of the night and say, I know somebody would pay me really well. <laughs> now I have a consulting practice and my clients that I work with do pay me really well, but I don't pursue as many clients as I used to because I have a startup. So relationships are really important for context because if you succeed and you don't have anybody to share that with, it's a really lonely victory. There was a gentleman in Tampa, um, one of the founders of a company called Ideal Image, which is now ex it just expanding and expanding. And um, he's been married three times. And he was in an event and he was talking. And you know, it's true that we get to say, we get to have this thing that I am, um, I've learned from all the challenges that I've been through. He was. And, and that's really, that's really cool. I'm not going to regret the things that I did that weren't good choices because I learned something from them. At least I should have. But you know, some of those lessons I wish I would have learned from somebody else's experience a little sooner. You know, I know a lot of people that have been entrepreneurs and, and um, they have a lot of broken relationships in that area. So that's why, you know, when we go back to that slide about the priorities, what's really important? Why are you doing this? If I'm doing this to make a life for my kids and provide them with, with incredible opportunities, and I miss all the important things that happen while they're growing up, hmm, would you wonder if they're really that important or if maybe I'm just saying that? And they are such an encouragement for me. You know, on those days where I wonder, like, should I just go get a, 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 regular, a regular job? Should I just do something different? They're like, no, mom, how would you ever do that? That would be like so boring for you. Look at the people that are around you 
And then just like breathing is really, is really important. So I'll tell you, this comes from my, uh, part of my diverse background, which is in, in the counseling. Um, when you look at somebody in the face and you look them in the eyes, scientifically, there's this thing called joy building. You have this excitement to see someone when it's somebody you love. And they say that joy passes between your eyes six cycles per second. In the middle of the day, just like you have to stop and breathe a couple of times, stop and look somebody in the face that you care about. Maybe it's, maybe it's somebody that you work with, a team member, and you go, you know, I really appreciate the work that you do, and I'm so glad if I was going to be here, I wouldn't want to be here with anybody but you. And you stop. I've had the opportunity to use this with people that have gone through some really traumatic um, experiences. And joy building works, not only for them, but for you. Works over, works over Skype. <laughs> works over Skype. So, staying in balance to win. You have three things that are finite. We all only have 24 hours. Whether you're Bill Gates, whether you're whoever you want to pick. The most famous leader, entrepreneur, business builder, the richest person in the world. It doesn't matter. Whether it's Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson, everybody only has 24 hours in the, in the day. And, and that's why, you know, when we look at that quadrant, I can manage time really well. I can pack a lot of stuff in there. But I only have so much energy. You know, I tell people, I can fit eight clients into a day, but if you want me to be creative and brilliant, do you want to be number eight? I only have so much energy. And I only have so much attention. You know, we were talking earlier about blocking tasks and putting things together. You know, and if you're being bombarded, you know, that, that quadrant over there where you're always responding to things that are, that are urgent and, and you're allowing people to interrupt you constantly, do you ever feel like that? And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't even get anything done. You only have so much of that. And there's four things that we have to do in our business. And we use this to, um, we created this chart for, uh, initially for one of my clients who always is looking for new technology tools and he forgets how much they cost and the adoption and, and all that. And so we use this to measure. Um, is it gonna maximize results? Is it gonna optimize cash flow? Am I gonna stay flexible? And does it help me build my team? And so whether it's activities, whether any of the things that we do, we use this as a tool to measure things by. And then focus. So the win-win, the secret to getting things done is just like a camera, you see the big picture and then you focus on the details. See the big picture, focus on the details. What's the number one thing I can do to next to move this forward? Every day, things change. Every day, I'm looking at what, how do I need to adjust? Um, what will I get the most impact for? So you're gonna identify and ask and, and assess. What is, my, what is my objective, my current resources? Who do I know? Who can help me in this project? Who can pick up the phone? Um, when we talk about raising money for your company, I tell people all money is not created equal. Some money you don't want, some clients you don't want. Some clients you want because not only are they a good gig to work on, but that project will take you into something incredible and that client will pick up the phone and say, you know what, I was working with so-and-so and they did great work. So focus, identify and assess. Create and inspire. Look at what you have. <laughs> Brainstorm. Get feedback. Look at possibilities. I believe there are two games, two card games that everybody should learn how to play. One is poker, because poker helps you realize that the cards that are there are narrowing. And the other one is 500 rummy. Because 500 rummy, the, the possibilities change each time there's a card there. And then you wonder, and you begin to play, how much am I willing to risk? So brainstorming, how can I leverage resources? We work with this project called Strategic Doing, and it's what could we do? What could we do if anything were possible? What should we do based on what we've come up with? What will we do? And what are we going to do next? So as an athlete, 
or an entrepreneur. Know yourself. Research some of those things. Understand what's happening. You're going to have, for me, I know that, that with the faster scale, there's days where I have one foot in balance and one foot way over here. Because life is happening and business is happening and, and stuff is happening with my family and somebody passes away and this happens and that happens and this client, they lose a major account so now they're not working with you and it's not because they don't like you but it's because something's happened in their cash flow. Stuff happens. So I have one foot in this place where life works and this one foot over here but I'm aware of where I'm at. I'm aware that I'm not balanced. And you know what, on the days that I'm not balanced, that's when you're tired, go to bed early, get up early. Stop, exercise, take a break. Take a break, uh, do something that's good for you, that moves your project forward, and win. So I, I love this, this is um, two, different, two different wins here. This is um, the Japanese stocks jumping on September 9th as Tokyo won the bid for the 2020 Olympics. So it's a win for them. And here we have um, one of our USA athletes celebrating um, men's slope style finals in 2014. What we're able to do as athletes now is absolutely phenomenal. In a world that tells everybody that you must be an entrepreneur, um, not true. You have to decide for yourself. Just because people tell you that you need to, you don't have to do anything unless it works with who you are. And if you know yourself, you can do incredible things. So um, this is me. You can find me online. I'm, I'm pretty available. Um, I have my business cards if you want one of those. If you're, there's any information that you want, the faster scale, I'll send it to you. Any of the, um, I've got, there's, I, have, I have like three pages of research on all the different entrepreneur articles and the people that have been depressed and are writing about it and people that are no longer with us because they couldn't handle that pressure. There's a lot of information on that. Um, and that's good information, but the truth is, is, what are you going to do about it in your business and your life? So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have some questions, I'll be here. And um, thank you.